Hey everybody, let's do another Hungry Caterpillar project. This time we're going to do some painting. Actually, depending on whether or not you have paint at home and what kind of paint you have, you might do this a few different ways. And I'm going to show you a few different ways to do it. So you might want to watch this video all the way through first so you can decide which way you're going to do it depending on what kind of materials you have. Okay, so this is like the one that I would do at school. This is 12 by 18, so this is a pretty big piece of paper, but you might not have that size of paper at home. So we're gonna do a smaller version, which would be closer to a regular size piece of paper. This is nine by 12 paper, but eight and a half by 11 regular computer paper would work too, even though that's kind of thin for using with painting, but you could probably make it work either way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by making six circles for our caterpillar's body on the middle of our paper. So what you want to find is some kind of a cup, okay, or some kind of a lid or something that you can use to draw your circles with. And I normally start on the left hand side of the paper and I'm going to get it pretty close to the edge of the paper and I'm just going to trace around my cup or my lid or whatever circle that I have so that I get a circle right there. Then I'm going to move that over and I'm going to trace the next circle. This time I'm going to stop when I touch the line of my first circle so that it overlaps a little bit. So it looks like the caterpillars connected together and the pieces aren't just floating there disconnected. So I'll do one, two, and three. And then we'll move over here and do four, five, and six. Okay? And you should be pretty close to the edge of your paper. And if you want to fill that up all the way, that'll be good. So that's the way you're going to start, no matter which way you're going to do this. So. Now I'm gonna show you about four different ways to add color to this caterpillar, and then we'll go from there. So go ahead and, and watch each of these four parts, and then decide which way you're gonna do this depending on what kind of materials you have. Okay, so the first way we're gonna do this is the way that's closest to the way we would do it if we were at school. We would use tempera paint there but you probably don't have that at home. You might, so if you have some temper, you can use that. But a lot of people, if they have anything at home, will have some of these craft acrylics, like from Hobby Lobby or something, and those acrylic paints will work pretty good because they're kind of matte and they'll work for the crayon drawing part that we're going to use. So what we're gonna do is, if you wanna do this the full way, is you're only gonna use red, yellow, and blue because those are the primary colors, okay? So if you have a color wheel, or if you don't know how this works, red and yellow and blue are your primary colors. And when you mix two primary colors together, you get a secondary color. So if you mix yellow and blue together, you'll get green. If you mix yellow and red together, you'll get orange. And if you mix blue and red together, you'll get purple or violet, okay? So that's the way a color wheel works. So we're gonna start with our red, yellow, and blue, and we're gonna mix up the other colors, okay? And then we'll paint our caterpillar. So if you don't have a cool paint palette at home, like one of these, then just use a paper towel inside of a paper plate or a plastic plate or something, okay? This is a good little trick that we use in the art room because then we just throw the paper towel out and we can reuse the plate over and over again, okay? So we're gonna start with our lightest color first. We're gonna start with our yellow and we're just gonna paint one part of the caterpillar with the yellow, okay? It doesn't matter which part you paint. You can paint whichever part you want, whichever color for now. So we're gonna start with that yellow part and go ahead and paint that in. And then keep a paper towel close by to you so you can wipe out your brush a little bit. But we don't have to do that yet because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move around our color wheel and we're gonna work from the lightest color all the way around the color wheel. So we're gonna start with yellow and move to orange. 
which means we're going to take a little tiny bit of red and we're going to mix it into our yellow until we get an orange color. So just take a little red and stir it up into your yellow until you've mixed up an orange color, okay? Just a tiny bit of red into the yellow. You don't need very much. The darker color always goes into the lighter color and that's the way you're going to mix your colors. So red's a little darker than yellow so we'll mix that up and we'll make some orange, okay? And you can do this in any order that you want but I'm going to kind of do it in this order. Oh, this is cool. Never mind. So what we've got now is our yellow and our orange. So we'll keep going around the color wheel and we'll get some red. What you can do is kind of use a paper towel and wipe out your brush. You don't have to rinse it all the way out because we're just going to use some red, okay? In the book, the caterpillar has a red head. So we'll go ahead and keep that for our idea here, if this is going to be the head side of the caterpillar. You never know. Okay. So then we're going to paint that red, and then we'll keep moving around. So we need some purple. So we're going to take a little red and a little blue. And you might notice that I've used a light blue color, more of a sky blue color, and that's a usually a better mixing blue, and you get a better purple from that than using a really dark blue. So you can try whatever you want and see what you get. But generally, a mixed purple is going to be a little bit more gray or less intense than a purple straight from the bottle. So we'll go ahead and go with that, okay? That's kind of a bluish purple. Um, so the mixed purple is going to be different than the purple that comes right out of the bottle. Now, that being said, if you decide that you don't want to do this color mixing part and you have all the colors available, you can grab a green and you can grab a purple and you can grab an orange and you can go ahead and just paint these without doing the color mixing, but then you lose out on trying out the color mixing part. So we're going to brush out that purple now in our brush and we're going to add a little bit of blue by itself. Okay. Just use the tip of your brush when you do this and you'll keep that new paint in the brush and less of it will be mixing in. All right, cool. So now we have our blue and then we're going to take a tiny bit of blue and we're going to mix it into our yellow and stir that up until we get a green, okay? And depending on how much we add, We'll get some kind of light green, we'll add a little bit more blue, okay? So you can try this out and see what kind of different colors you can get. If you have more yellow than blue, you'll have a yellow green. If you have more blue than yellow, you'll have a blue green. And those are called the intermediate colors, the ones that have two names, like yellow orange, blue violet, red violet, blue green, okay? So now we have our caterpillar all painted with our six colors, our primary colors and our secondary colors. And that's the way we would start if we're color mixing and painting with acrylic or tempera. So let me show you how to do it a couple of other ways and depending on if you don't have paint at home. Okay, but before we do that, I almost forgot this is the most fun part, okay? After you've painted all your acrylic and tempera, then you should mix all your colors together. Take a little red and a little orange and a little blue and stir them up all together, okay? And you're going to usually get some kind of a gray or brown, okay? Depending on how much of those colors you mix together, you'll get kind of a grayish brown color, okay? And this is usually everybody's favorite part. They want to mix all their colors together and see what they get, okay? So normally you'll end up with some kind of a gray or a brownish color, okay? Depending on how much of each color you have left over, okay? So uh, if you have more red in there, it can be kind of a reddish brown. If it's green or yellow, it can be a yellowish, okay? 
or uh, if there's a lot of blue in there, it can be kind of a dark purplish or bluish brown. But either way, okay, take whatever brown you've mixed up and paint a little bit of dirt on the ground for your caterpillar, okay? You could decide later, you could make this a tree branch or something if you wanted to. Um, but we usually end up making it some kind of ground. So we'll, we'll show you a couple different things that you can do with that. But paint a little bit of brown on the bottom before you get rid of all your paint, okay? Now I'm going to show you what to do if you don't have paint at home. Okay, so if you can't find any paint, or your mom and dad don't want to let you use any of your paint at home, or watch you while you use it, then you need crayons, okay? And you need the six colors that we talked about earlier. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And what you're going to do is you're going to fill in your caterpillar with line patterns, okay? One color to each spot. So you'll need your six circles just like before, and then you're going to go ahead and put some kind of a pattern in there, okay? So you can do a zigzag with your crayon, okay? And you can just do straight lines. Maybe you want to double that up and make it kind of a crosshatch pattern, a crisscrossing pattern, okay? With your yellow... We'll do a scooping line, like water. Okay, with our green, let's do a wavy line. With our blue, let's do a castle line, okay? Kind of goes up and down like the top of a castle. That's cool. And then let's just do a scribbly line with this. So we're just going to make this kind of scribbly. We're still going to keep it in the line though, okay? Even though it's kind of scribbly and wild, okay? So. This is if you're going to use crayons and watercolors. So, same idea. If you want to use crayons and markers, you're going to do exactly the same thing. It's going to be the same thing. Color in all of the lines, okay, using those six different colors. And then in the next video, I'll show you how to use either the watercolor paints or the markers to put things together. All right, so that's day one. All right, we'll see you guys for part two in just a little bit. Bye-bye.